Hey, welcome back to the world according to Briggs. I'm Briggs and this is my channel. On this channel, I make top 10 lists about travel and, and different locations for the most part. Last week, I did the worst small towns in America and I normally like to do both sides of any theme and bring you the positive side in my next video. Now, after it was uploaded last week, I got a bunch of comments, both pro and con about the video. Small town people are very passionate about their hometowns. They like to tell you how wrong you are about their town whenever you do make a video. And that's fine. Hometowns are like family members. I get it. Kind of in your roots, you know? That's where your roots are, your hometown, your small town. I always get a good laugh, though, when I get people throwing insults over a travel comedy video. Always good stuff. But anyway, that being said, let's get started. Here's my top 10 best small towns in America. Number 10, Jackson, Wyoming. If you like the outdoors, this is your place. Jackson is 60 miles from Yellowstone, five from Grand Teton National Parks. Jackson, Wyoming is tourism. It is, that's what people are there for. They have a couple cool attractions, Snow King Resort. They also have this really cool thing, it's not gonna sound too cool, the National Elk Refuge. The elk thing is a good time, it really is. Unless your name's Lydia, and you're an older woman, and you're crazy, you're bitter, and you're an expert on everything. This woman talked the whole trip. It was bad. It was really bad. Eventually, some guy on the tour turned around, and looked at Lydia and said, oh, there's just one of you. And she's like, yes, what were you expecting? And he goes, well, as much talking as you do, I thought there'd be three to nine of you. Three to nine, not three or four of you, not five or six of you, three to nine of you. The best part is Lydia wanted off the tour right then. In the middle of the field, she was... That was it. She was in serious victim mode and claimed she didn't feel safe with that man on the tour anymore. The guy said two sentences and turned around, and he was an older gentleman, about 60, 70 years old. <laughs> anyway, so that was a good time. Jackson has a large shopping center and a restaurant district, giving it a bunch of kind of cool things to do, other than hiking, camping, and watching Elk's mate while well, Lydia describes it to you. It's got a lot of things to do. Now, when I stayed there, I stayed at the Cowboy Village Log Cabin Resort, which this is a really neat place. It's like a hotel, but they give you your individual log cabins. It was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. I'm going back probably in 2018, maybe 2019. Going to do some more snowmobiling there. That's a lot of fun, too. But other than that, the schools are amazing, apparently. They get high marks and everything, and they have very, very low crime. It's well below the national average, even especially, I should say, for a tourist location. Number 9. Port Angeles, Washington. Port Angeles is settled between the Olympic Mountain Range and the Strait of Juan de Fuca, in the Puget Sound, basically. There's a lot of fun stuff for residents around this town. You got mountains, rivers, lakes, forest lands. You also have a great medical care center, the Olympic Medical Center, which is kind of big for a place this small and out of the way. It's really nice. A lot of good doctors and nurses there. The schools are nice and it has very low crime. Only about two hours from Seattle probably would be closer time-wise if you didn't have to take a ferry. I hate ferries. Sorry if there's any ferry captains out there that are growing red in the face right now. I, I'm i sorry, I just don't like ferries. I'm sure they're safer than driving. I just would rather not take a ferry. And when I say ferry, I mean boat or ship type thing, nothing else. So quit typing. Home prices are low, jobs are good, and very little crime. And like a lot of places around the Puget Sound, if you look out in the ocean, there's a good chance you might see a orca or two. Number 8, Arcata, California. Located near Humboldt Bay, Arcata is a college town, with Humboldt State University students making up more than half the city's total population. For most of you, you just gasped and said, college town? College towns are nightmares. College kids are nightmares. Not Humboldt State kids. It's a pretty mellow school. Arcata has very low home prices for California, especially when you consider how close they are to the ocean and crime levels being much lower than the state average. Very low home prices. Arcata had three murders in 2013. Prior to that, they hadn't had one since 2002, and that was just one. And before that, it'd been quite some time since they'd had a murder. Crime is very low in Arcata. Notable residents, Arcata is home of UFC fighter Nate Quarry. Good fighter in his day. Most people know him for getting knocked out so hard he was asleep standing up. Good night, Nate. Number seven, Spearfish, South Dakota. Okay, once you realize there's a giant difference between North and South Dakota, 
you can relax and listen. North Dakota is kind of a nightmare. South Dakota is a really nice place to live. And one of the best places in South Dakota is a small town called Spearfish, South Dakota. This is another place for the outdoor types. Three mountains surround Spearfish. Outdoor lovers come here to fish in the creek, hike the canyon, and visit the Black Hills. It's not too far from the town of Deadwood and Sturgis, and like I said, the Black Hills National Forest is right behind it. Now, if you ever do go to Deadwood and you're hungry, go to the gym. This is a steakhouse inspired by the HBO series Deadwood. If you've never seen that, it's great. It's a series about the 1800s gold mining days in South Dakota. Good news is they don't use the F word as much at the gym as they did in the TV show. In Spearfish, they have highly regarded schools within the Spearfish School District, and the Black Hill State University is a really good university. The only downside is you have to tell everyone you live in a place called Spearfish. Number six, Point Roberts, Washington. Point Roberts is a strange little nipple of land near Vancouver, British Columbia. It was part of Washington state, but it's connected by land only to Canada. And it's hard not to have an ocean view on the point. I love this place. If I had it my way, I would be retired there right now. Crime is non-existent there. The school that they have there is decent, and that's only to third grade. After that, you got to travel to Blaine, Washington. The kids fourth grade and above have to bus it through Canada to Blaine, Washington and go to school. That's about the only downside of the place. Like I said, ocean view. People see orca swimming by on a regular basis. Now, they have some stats, and I'm just going to give them to you as bullet points, because it's pretty interesting. The overall crime rate on Point Roberts is 58% lower than the national average. 58% lower. Point Roberts is safer than 85% of the cities in the United States. On Point Roberts, you only have a 1 in 88 chance of becoming a victim of any crime. Any crime. Not just assaults or murders or anything like that. Any crime whatsoever. Only a 1 in 88. Now, the housing prices, they can get a little steep there. Especially if you do have one of the Ocean View ones or one right on the ocean. It's like a little village of the United States. Now, you can travel by ferry to Seattle or whatever, but most people will go up through Vancouver and back down. Now, you also get to go through Vancouver and to Vancouver, so there's a lot of really cool things you can get from Canada and stuff, but you're right there. Especially if you're an older person that has to pay for, you know, your prescriptions and stuff, you have Canada right there, and a lot of people nowadays go to Canada to get their prescriptions for like 10% of what they are here. I don't know the actual number, but I know it's a hell of a lot cheaper. Point Roberts is probably where I'll retire, and it's number six on our list. Number five, Hood River, Oregon. This is another place for the outdoor types. Snow ski, snowboard, windsurf, mountain bike, hike, whatever you want to do, all in the same day. Mount Hood is less than an hour away, depending on what part of the mountain you're going to, from Hood River. If you don't feel like driving up a mountain for fun, the town of Hood River is located where the Hood River and the Columbia River meet. This town has very little crime, and as of 2016, they haven't had a murder in over 20 years. That's a good That's a good number. Just a couple of assaults every year and a handful of robberies. Typical touristy type town. If that all sounds good to you, start packing up soon because home values are starting to creep up. I've driven through and stayed two nights in Hood River, and I really liked it. We kind of looked at that place when we moved to Oregon originally. Now, we decided to stay closer to Portland, obviously, if you follow along here. But Hood River is a really, really nice small town in Oregon right across the river from Washington, too. Number four, Bar Harbor, Maine. Now, I haven't done much time in Maine over the course of my life. I do have a buddy from the Army that grew up in Bar Harbor, and he always spoke very highly of the place. His parents owned a restaurant there. Bar Harbor is a town on Mount Desert Island, Maine. That's a little tiny, well, not really tiny, but it's an island right off the coast of Maine. One thing that stands out about Bar Harbor is it has some of the best air quality in the country, consistently. If that's something you're concerned with, you should probably rent a U-Haul today. Crime is very, very low. I tried to find the last murder they had in Bar Harbor, and I had nothing for 30 years. Couldn't find anything. If I'm wrong, let me know, but I, I did some searching. All I ran into was a bunch of stories about grisly murders that led to hauntings from the 1800s, just stuff like that. The only knock on this place is the cost of living. It's high. The website areavibes.com gives it an A plus on the crime category and an F on cost of living. But the place is amazing and it still might be worth it, especially if you got some coin in your pocket. 
Number three, St. Augustine, Florida. Considered the nation's oldest city, St. Augustine celebrated its 450th anniversary back in 2015, so now it's 452 years old. Residents get to live with what millions of tourists come to see every single year. Historic Spanish architecture, amazing beaches, and a great downtown filled with restaurants, shops, and museums. As a matter of fact, they are ranked 10th in the amount of museums for any city. The main industry here is obviously tourism, and they always have jobs. They have a great school system, and a low cost of living compared to other coastal towns. It's also the hometown of the late, great Tom Petty, who passed away early this month. Number two, Lebanon, New Hampshire. Lebanon offers residents the type of life that you just won't find in any big city. Lebanon is a beautiful place with a strong economy and a good educational system, affordable housing, and very low crime. This is a town that always seems to be on all lists about good places to live. Lebanon and West Lebanon are tucked in a valley along the Connecticut River. Lebanon is home of the Dartmouth Hitchcock Medical Center, which is a great, great place. A couple high-tech companies, including TomTom, the ones that do the GPS thing. Under notable residents on Wikipedia, they listed Charlie Parkhurst. If you don't know who that is, you're not alone. Charlie was a cross-dressing stagecoach driver from the 1800s. Not sure why someone felt the need to add him to this list. The only thing Charlie ever did was convince everyone that she was a man. It's not a big deal, I imagine. Maybe for the time. But I suspect my cousin Willie's been doing the same thing. And he doesn't have a Wikipedia page. And number one, Traverse City, Michigan. Finally, something about Michigan that isn't Detroit or Poison Water and Flint. This town of about 15,000 people consistently rank high on lists about best small towns all over the internet. It's easy to see why. Great beaches, great vineyards, great views of Lake Michigan. Visitors, newcomers, anyone just stopping by tourists, they fall in love with this Michigan town. Do you like wine, boating, hate stuck up a-holes? If so, go to Traverse City and not Martha's Vineyard. That's a quote from a subscriber who's lived in both. The city has no real notable residents. Well, I mean, this dude's from the city, but he's really not notable. Home prices are kind of low compared to other towns, and even lower if you do live next door to this dude. If you don't mind snow, cold weather in general, I think we found your new hometown. Well, everyone, that's my list. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got some good information out of it. Maybe you found a new hometown. Whatever. Either way, don't forget to leave me a comment, leave me a like. If this is your first time here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Also, I did find another book. Well, I'd known about it and I read it years ago and I picked it, I read it again. It's by John Steinbeck. It's Travels with Charlie in Search of America. It's, he went on a travel around America and just drove around and checked out America. It was, it's a really cool book. Pick it up, the link's down below along with Blue Highways in case you haven't got that. Everybody have a great day. Be nice to each other. Not the needle, not the thread, the lost decree. Saying nothing, that's enough for me. And once I knew.